How's it going? Today I'm going to spend a little bit of time walking through Spend Center and our direct bill spend and expense product. I'm going to go over um, some similarities and some key differences. And I'll be focusing mostly on virtual, virtual cards and budgets um, while also showing some of the other uh, core features that we have throughout uh, in the product. Uh, for starters, we'll jump into budgets, give you an idea of what those are. In Spend Center, you can think of a budget as a way to categorize spend and enable virtual card spend as well. Um, it, it enables companies to, to set up teams. Um, so if you have a product team, a marketing team, so on and so forth, you're able to categorize spend to those and then also set specific charts of accounts and custom fields for those specific budgets as well. Um, here I can add different members to a budget, edit, edit budget settings, um, but let's jump into manage cards. Here are the virtual cards that were created for this budget. Uh, this is a list of all of the virtual cards for that specific budget that we uh, were just in. Now if I were to come in and create a new virtual card, we'll call this test Russell since we'll create a card for Russell. Uh, available to spend, we'll give Russell $100 to spend this month and all future months. I know that he's going to um, have some other projects coming up. Um, and so I'll give him a couple, uh, a couple hundred dollars there. We'll set card active through date to the end of May. We come in here, search for Russell, assign the card to him. And then just a quick overview, this is the card name is Test Russell. The budget we're assigning the card to is Danny B. Test. Uh, he'll have $100 this month, $200 for all future months. Um, the card will um, expire be act or be active through and close um, at the end of May. Go ahead and create this card. These are some optional fields that uh, can be set, um, but not required. That's all um, set up within the settings of Spend Center. Here, I'll create this card. Russell will now actually in real time get a notification that um, a card has been created for him. He'll also get an email letting him know uh, a card has been created for him and that he'll be able to see it uh, next time he logs into Spend Center. Um, once Russell starts making transactions, I'll be able to keep an eye on those um, and see what he's doing, uh, see his activity on this card. Um, here I can edit the card or close it. Let's jump back to the budget. Now we'll see um, this uh, card that Russell has. Um, now, if I know that Russell is going to um, be managing some of, um, you know, different spend for um, some of our, you know, marketing campaigns, then I can rename this card, um, rename this card to whatever, you know, it makes sense so that Russell knows that it's for, um, you know, marketing campaign, ABC, whatever we, whatever it's called. Um, Russell will know that he should only spend that card, uh, use this card for spend on marketing campaign ABC. And I can make uh, as many of these cards as I need to for this budget. Um, and then spend will uh, be capped at the, uh, at the credit limit, the company credit limit. Um, if I were to assign over a hundred dollars, I could, um, for this virtual card, spend would be capped at $100. But if I, um, for whatever reason, wanted to give Russell a limit all the way up to the credit line, I could do that. Um, not very likely that would happen, um, but he would be capped there. That said, if I wanted to create a new budget, you'd come to this page, I'd enter the name of the budget. Test 
test March. Um, I want the virtual card limit to reset um, on, you know, whatever cadence that I set here. Um, oftentimes we, you know, most of the time we see folks choose monthly, but we have other, other cadences as well. Um, I can set a um, expiration date for this budget or just leave it open-ended um, and not have it expire. Next, here in Spend Center, I will, uh, in the budget screen, I'll add some budget owners. Add Russell Smith, I'll add myself. One of those owners. Owners can be thought of as um, really a, as admins of the budget. And these users, yeah. Um, there we go. Um, and so now, um, even if I have the lowest user role access in Spend Center, um, the highest would be admin. Um, but uh, even if I had the lowest um, user role of member um, within this budget, I would still be able to create uh, physical cards for other people um, within the budget, regardless of my role and regardless of their role, because I've been set as the budget owner. We'll click next. Oops. Um, this is asking if I want to um, have any specific custom fields. Um, selected and optional uh, for this budget. Not very concerned with that. This is an overview. Go ahead and click create budget. Um, and here we have, we can see that the budget was created. Um, I'll be able to see any transactions um, that have occurred in this budget as, you know, when those do occur, um, you know, any that uh, need approval have been approved or denied, so on and so forth. You can see reimbursements categorized to the budget as well. Um, so overall, it's a great place for, uh, for users to come in, categorize spend, and see what uh, spend is happening within a particular department, as well as create virtual cards um, so they can spend on those as well. Let's jump over into our Divi or Spend and Expense product. Um, I'll start off with um, you know, where I land as an admin when I log in. It's on this screen. Uh, I see a list of to-dos for myself. Um, you'll notice that it's very similar um, to Spend Center with obviously some key differences. Uh, one, of the, one of the big key differences of, uh, of Divi compared to Spend Center is that we have, um, uh, we can manage funds on the physical card. So I'll get into that here in a minute um, and we can, uh, we can allow, we can assign, uh, we can create physical cards, we can assign physical card limits, so on and so forth. Um, but from a transaction approval standpoint, um, on this screen, I can, it's kind of like my home base screen where I can uh, see everything that I need to do or really be aware of. Um, but these are the transactions that I need to approve. I can click on view all, or I can just come to transactions and I've got it already filtered by uh, the approval status. Um, of need, need uh, needs my approval. Um, click on this transaction. I can see that there is a uh, receipt appended. And then uh, I'd be able to review, review it. If it looks good, I'll go ahead and approve it or deny it. Um, add that on there, approve, um, and then uh, DEPA will be notified that uh, their transaction is approved. Let's jump into budgets. We'll go over some of the key differences here. Um, to create a new budget. That's budget groups. Get into that in another session. Um, You know, let spenders know that it's this is the reason for um, for this budget. Um, company client dinners. 
Um, we'll make this a recurring budget, select the frequency. You know, this is pretty similar to some of the stuff uh, settings we saw in Spend Center. Uh, we won't ex assign an expiration date to this budget. Um, we'll add budget owners, same idea here. Danny Bertolino, myself, members, I'll add Russell. Um, um, you can click here if you want uh, users to be automatically added to this budget um, every time an account is created for them. I won't do that, um, but can be very helpful. Do I want to spend target for this budget? Yes, I do. We'll add in $100 and uh, well, we're taking clients out to dinner, so <laughs> we're going to go big for the month. Uh, $5,000 in all future months. We plan on spending a lot more, $6,000. Let's go. Um, here uh, are some different options of spend targets. Um, so uh, this, this option of allowing overspend would allow folks to go over that $5,000 um, if needed, but they, would, uh, they wouldn't know that, uh, budget members wouldn't know um, that they could go over that 5,000. So Russell in this instance wouldn't know that he could go over that 5,000. Um, and then um, allow overspend, but to an extent, extent um, we'll add in a $500 buffer. We don't want um, anybody, you know, getting embarrassed in front of a client with a decline because the tip didn't, uh, you know, the tip went over um, the allotted amount. Um, and then, you know, this would be uh, declining charges once the budget limit has been met, um, hard stop. Um, shared funds, if I uh, turn shared funds on, it would make it so that I have access to all $5,000 within the budget. Um, but let's say I know Russell will be traveling, so, um, I need him to have $1,000 allocated to himself. Um, that will make it so that I then only have access to $4,000 so that I don't take any of you know Russell's travel or client money uh, from him. Go from there. You know, I don't want Russell to wake up and think that he has $1,000 to spend. Not that he would, but we'll just do that just in case. Um, next. This is an overview of the budget. Then I will create it. Then it'll drop me into an overview screen of the budget. I can see um, and manage um, everything from here. If I create a vendor card uh, or a virtual card, um, I'd be able to see that show up here. Um, this member card and vendor card, the key difference here is uh, member card is uh, you can think of it as a carbon copy of the physical card, um, money that funds that are allocated to a physical card um, can also be um, spent on a member card. Um, whereas a vendor card, it is um, specific um, money funds that are assigned um, to a user to be able to spend. So I know that um, there, let's say there's an ad campaign. Um, and so I'll name this ad campaign card. Um, I will know to use this card specifically and only on an ad campaign. Um, from here, I would assign this to myself. And for all future months, I would, um, you know, I know that I only need um, to spend this month, so I won't, um, won't add spend for future months. Go ahead and create this card, and then we'd see it show up here. Lastly, let's jump into integrations. This is where we'll find our, uh, some of our new HRIS, um, HR integration uh, system uh, features, um, as well uh, we'll dive into that in a second, as well as uh, our new Slack integration, which allows you to request and approve or deny funds through Slack um, with uh, our spend and expense product. 
Um, let's get in, let's dive a little bit into the HRIS, um, HRIS um, feature though. Um, so this is what it would look like if I already connected to Bamboo HR. Um, but let's say I didn't connect it. Um, when I first uh, logged into the integrations page, you can kind of see behind here, HRIS integration, connect. Once that comes up, I would see a list of um, different available option uh, software partners um, that I could choose from. I could also search there. Once I choose one, uh, log in with my credentials, I would then see that show up here and I can click on, I can remove it or I can click on manage people, add people, and then um, coming here, I can search, um, I can search through my Bamboo HR users um, or accounts. Um, and um, those would show up here. I can then pull them into my spend and expense account. I can search by um, manager, so on and so forth. A pretty cool feature. It <clears throat> removes a lot of the manual work um, involved around adding people, especially large lists of people um, with different titles and roles. Um, removes a lot of that manual work there. I think that covers everything uh, for today. Thank you. Have a great day.